Hey everybody, Eric with MountModernLife.com. I hope you guys are doing great today. Uh, now today's video isn't going to be a how-to, but it's going to be more of a cautionary tale of an obvious thing that you should never do, um, which is basically what we just did, and it's kind of embarrassing even to share it, uh, but I did think it was important just to touch on it because, you know, in life mistakes are made, sometimes they're stupid mistakes, but all you can do is push forward and try to get them corrected. So this story specifically starts when we actually took off from Florida to come up here to Wisconsin. And when we were on our way up here, we stopped to get some gas and I decided to run inside and go to the bathroom and ask Katie to go ahead and finish up the pumping of the gas. Well, she had never done it before and our gas cap uh, actually isn't attached there. So I generally put it down here actually on the hitch of the RV. Oh, there it is, you can see it there. Um, but when she got done filling up the tank, she couldn't find it and just assumed that maybe there's some other way uh, that uh, it's protected. So she closed the door and I came out of the bathroom, saw the door closed, she was in the car, I jumped in the RV and we took off. Now, the thing is, is that our gas cap is probably somewhere between here and uh, Florida uh, on the side of the road. Well, anyway, at our next fill up, I noticed that we didn't have a gas cap and I'm like, okay, well, we're cruising up there. We're going to make it. Let's just go ahead and get up there and we'll get a gas cap when we get there. Well, the problem was, is once we got up here, I got super distracted and I thought about it a couple times, but uh, then I ultimately forgot about it and uh, we sat here uh, with no gas cap. <laughs> well, anyway, a few weeks back, I actually went ahead and decided, okay, it's time to start up the RV. Let's let it run a little bit just because we've been here a little while, uh, just to let it get its feet wet a little bit. Uh, and I started it up, started no problem. It ran about eight minutes and then it cut off. And I'm like, oh no, what's going on? So I tried to start it again and it wouldn't start. It would just turn over, wouldn't quite crank. Uh, so I started doing a ton of research, trying to figure out what it is. And uh, there was, you know, obviously just like if you go online to look up something that's wrong with you, uh, they're gonna tell you all the worst things that it could possibly be. Um, but anyway, so I started thinking about it and I'm like, okay, well, we haven't had a gas cap and it's been raining quite a bit. Maybe some water got in there. So I called my grandpa, who's worked on engines his entire life, vehicle engines, snowmobile, four-wheeler, tractor, everything. And I told him kind of what was happening. And he said, you know, it does sound like there may be some condensation buildup in there. You might want to try this product called Heat. Uh, so I went ahead and picked up some heat and I poured it in the gas tank. And the way the heat works is it's actually an alcohol base. And generally when it goes in there, it gets rid of water and condensation because the water and condensation attracts to that alcohol substance. substance. And then when it goes through the engine, it's still flammable because it's attached to the heat. Well, anyway, I tried that and it didn't work. And at that point I started thinking about it. And I'm like, hey, you know, we might have a lot of water in there. So I started looking around and I read a lot about uh, fuel filters and I'm like, well, you know, regardless of what's going on, we haven't changed the fuel filter, so we should get a new one anyway. So I went into town, checked around at all the auto parts stores, and everyone told me that this engine, our 8100 Vortec GM motor engine, uh, didn't require a fuel filter because with their vehicles, it's actually built into the fuel pump. Well, I got back and I thought to myself, you know what, let me just get under there and check. Well, it turns out this engine generally doesn't have a fuel filter because it's built into the pump, uh, but with the RV, it does have one. And not only does it have one, it has a custom fuel filter that actually pumps through the filter and then back into the tank, but then some of it goes to the engine. So it separates it after it goes to the fuel filter. Uh, so I couldn't find it anywhere and I had to look all over online. And then I came across this company called uh, Ultra RV Products. Uh, and they were fantastic. The customer service was awesome and they were able to get me the custom fuel filter within two days and it was great. Now, so now here we are, I've got a new fuel filter on the way, but we're still filled up with water in our tank and we have quite a bit of gas in there from the trip up here. So now the ultimate objective was to get the fuel and water out of there so that no more water would be going into the engine. So at this point, I run into town and I find some siphons. They're pump siphons that have clear plastic hoses on them. And I grab one, I bring it back, 
and uh, it's not quite long enough. So I thought to myself, well, I could get something online that would be perfect, but I wanna get this done now. So I went back into town, grabbed another one, pieced them together, and then I had plenty of length to get into the tank. So I'm sitting there and I'm trying to get the hose into the tank. I spend quite a few hours just trying to get in there, but I get to the last little corner before it drops into the tank and I can't get the hose to go around it. So I do something next that I'm not recommending you do. I don't know if you should do this. I don't know if I should have done this, uh, but it did work. Uh, I actually took, we have this really long dog lead that's made out of metal, but it's covered in a rubber coating. And I actually fed that dog lead in through the clear siphon hose. And that gave it just a little bit more durability and strength so that it pushed around that last corner, got into the tank, and I was able to siphon it out. So we ended up siphoning out about 20 gallons worth of gas water mixture. And I know it was gas water mixture because it was a white filmy kind of nasty substance. Um, and actually, uh, when once we got done siphoning it all out, I was like, you know, I don't want to put the new fuel filter on there and run any water through there. So let me see if the fuel pump will actually pump out whatever's left in there, maybe, you know, half a gallon or something. <laughs> Well, in order to do that, I had to have Katie turn the key to the forward position where the lights would come on on the dashboard. And when she does that, the fuel pump actually activates in the tank and squirts out gas so that in, as soon as you turn it over, there's gas in there for it to start. Well, anyway, we ended up having to do that forever because somewhere, even though the dashboard said we were at zero miles to empty and we had no gas in the tank and I wrapped on the tank and I couldn't, it sounded completely empty. Somehow there was another five and a half, six gallons in there. So overall, all said and told, we probably pulled out about 25, 26 gallons worth of gas and water. Anyway, we got it all empty. I'm feeling confident. It's good to go. I'm like, let me go ahead and add the fuel filter back to the place here. So I went ahead and added the new one on there, went to the store, got some gas, put some more gas in, threw a little bit more heat in there in case there was some water in the lines that I wasn't able to actually completely empty, and then threw a little bit more gas on top of that. And then I decided, okay, let's go give it a try. Well, I tried it and it didn't work. I tried it a few times, but uh, just nothing wouldn't work. And it was just like the day when I was siphoning it. Uh, I couldn't get it into the tank. So I gave up and said the next day I'll come back and this is gonna work. And it did. Well, same thing happened with the start. It wouldn't start the first day. I gave it the night to rest. The next morning I came back, she cranked up like a charm, running smooth as eggs. And to be honest, it's actually crazy because our fuel filter, kind of glad it actually happened because with the new fuel filter on there, our engine sounds better than it sounded in quite a long time. So it's kind of a blessing in disguise. Uh, but anyway, the whole point of this entire story is that, you know, crazy, stupid things can happen. You just gotta push forward. And if you lose your gas cap, replace it immediately and water and gas don't mix <laughs> now to be honest uh when this first happened we thought about maybe calling a mobile mechanic or even uh you know taking it somewhere or getting it towed somewhere to get it fixed but i thought to myself last time we went to the shop we were there for three months i don't want to do that again let me see if i can figure it out and we did actually get it started so we're pretty excited about that um, but uh, anyway, again, moral of the story, if you lose your gas cap, replace it immediately. Um, but anyway, one more thing I did want to note, we actually mentioned it in the last video, and that's that uh, coming up here in the beginning of November, uh, full-time Freedom Week starts. And what it is, is it's one of the largest online conferences for RVers. Uh, and there's over 30 speakers that are going to talk about all different topics on RVing. Uh, actually pretty exciting, Katie's speaking there. She's gonna be talking about preparing for an RV renovation in your RV, uh, so we're really excited about that. Uh, but I wanted to mention it again because like we said in the last video, uh, when Katie and I first decided to hit the road, I mean, we were like sponges researching everything we possibly could. And if you guys are looking to hit the road or if you're already on the road, uh, it's just a great resource that you can sign up for for free. Uh, and as long as you watch the videos the day they come out, you can watch them all for free. But if you do happen to miss some of them, you can sign up for a pass that'll give you extended time to go ahead and watch those videos. But it's just gonna be a ton of great information from a ton of awesome RVers. 
Uh, so in the in the description box, I'll put a link for that so you guys can go over there and get your free pass. Uh, and then also I did want to say I will have a link to RB Ultra part products. Uh, they were just really awesome and I, I can't say enough how helpful they were uh, as far as getting me the custom part I needed for the RV. Uh, but anyway, that about wraps it up for today. I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video and I hope you take to heart the lesson to replace your gas cap if you lose it right away. Uh, but anyway, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys again soon.